All right, today I'm talking to all you women out there who have osteoporosis, osteopenia. If you're menopausal, perimenopausal, and you're worried about your bone density, this is going to be for you. We are going to talk about bone density, why women are losing it at alarming rates, why, why now more than ever, why some women don't. Um, and I'm going to give you a really, really simple study that we've been following up with science, but I'm going to give you a little bit of information from the Chinese medicine side as well, and a little bit of nervous system resetting tools. So I'm going to mix that all together, jam it all together for you today. And you're going to walk away with really, really simple tool to help build your bones. That's going to take uh, probably about a minute and a half a day. So let's go. Um, okay. So from an Eastern medicine perspective, the bones have to do with are related to the kidney system and the adrenal system in Chinese medicine. So the bones we say are governed by the kidneys. The kidneys are like our essence, the energy. It's like our bank account of energy. It's our foundation for vitality. The adrenals sit on top of the kidneys. It's the same energetic system. And in Eastern medicine, we look at systems as having many different parts. It has the organs, it has a sense organ, it has a time of year, it has a taste, a food, a color, all of that. So the kidneys are related to the bones. We say it's the deepest energy in the body. Bones also show up in our teeth. So we say our teeth are our invisible bones. And the kidneys govern the bones and the production of marrow. In Chinese medicine, if you know anything about it, you've I'm sure you've heard about yin and yang balance. Yin and yang are essential. They are, everything falls into these two categories and they're not separate. They're kind of always flowing from one into the other. Kind of like daytime naturally flows into night, which naturally flows into daytime. We sleep and then we're awake and then we get tired and we go to bed again. This is all that flushing and flowing back and forth. Think about our world, if you know anything about yin and yang, yang is more that active energy, the doing, the achieving, the checking things off the list, the, the energy that wakes us up in the daytime. It's related to adrenaline, cortisol, testosterone, a little more male focused. It's more of a masculine energy, though women have it as well. This isn't men versus women. This is just men naturally have more yang energy. And the yin is more of that receptive energy. It's more of the intuition, the inner knowing, the resting, the digesting, the con contemplation, the inner world, the being more than the doing. Our world is just a little bit more of the doing versus the being. And what's really interesting is that when we check things off our list, when we get things done, that gives us this dopamine rush. Dopamine for a man with a man, more of a male yang side actually is the foundation that gives them the building blocks to build out all the other hormones that they need, the testosterone, the, the cortisol, the adrenaline. Women don't actually get the same um, effects from dopamine. Dopamine actually decreases our most important hormone, the one that all other hormones build from, which is oxytocin, which is a yin hormone. And so that's more of that building, connective, feeling, um, cozy time. It's a, when we do more restorative yoga, where things that, you know, when we're like having a really good conversation with a friend, when we hear each other, that's more of that yin or the oxytocin building side. And so if we're depleting one, the interesting thing is if we have more dopamine as a woman, we actually naturally decrease our oxytocin. So we're kind of pulling the, the plug on our essential hormone that's going to build all these other things. Trust me, I'm going to the bones. <laughs> Stay with me. So yin is this more substance and includes the bone mass and more of that yin energy. So modern life is mostly yang, not so much yin restoration. We've kind of made resting not such a valuable thing to do. I don't know if you're like most women I've met, but most women feel a little bit guilty when they're resting and they're like, ah, I should do this thing. I should get up. I'll rest later. So we've literally, we're burning through our energy, energy or that foundation and literally our bones, because if we don't have enough energy, our body is going to pull from resources that can be absolutely anything that can be re, you know, we have hormone, we have a certain amount of energy and it's like if we're not resting and we're not replenishing and we need more cortisol, we're going to not be producing estrogen, not be producing oxytocin. So, and literally our bones are a substance that we pull from. So chronic stress will deplete the kidney energy in Chinese medicine. Well, you'll often hear people talk about kidney qi deficiency or kidney yin deficiency. And a lot of the symptoms we associate with perimenopause and menopause, hot flashes, waking up in the night, um, 
you know, waste like osteoporosis, this is a often a kidney yin deficiency. So the weakened kidney cyst energy can't actually nourish the bones. In Western medicine, we think of cortisol and that equals basically kidney changing or kidney deficiency. Same problem, different language, these systems. I love when we can learn and understand both and see where they overlap because they overlap everywhere. Um, so from a Western science, chronic stress, we say destroys the bone. So elevated cortisol will equals bone density loss. So cortisol blocks the osteoblasts, the bone building cells from forming. Um, it increases the osteoclasts, which are the bone reabsorbing cells. So it breaks down bone faster than it rebuilds it. It's like a bank account, right? If you're doing more energy out, the more energy in, you're in overdraft. And that doesn't feel so good. Um, there was actually a study of 11,000 women, postmenopausal women, um, that had high social stress. And these women, when they measured them t six years later, had lower bone density than other women. Um, perimenopausal women with chronic depression, ha there's a direct correlation between high cortisol and low, low, bo low bone density. And cortisol also blocks calcium absorption. And so that's meaning we can't actually absorb it into the bones means more bone destroyed than deposited equals osteoporosis. And unfortunately, because we're living in more of a young dominant world, more of the dopamine filled world, women more than men have a constant level of stress, a constant high level of cortisol that's putting them in a fight and flight mode. And that can become our default state. And our bodies can't distinguish between real threat or daily stress, like opening up the email, too much to do. There's actually a, um, a saying about stress that I love, and stress is simply more things to do than resources we have. Resources can be support team, it can be money, it can be time in our day, it can be just, you know, we don't have enough to do what we need to do. And bones, unfortunately, are playing the price. But there's something so simple we can do. And this is so cool. It is the simplest, simplest thing you could do. And I'm going to actually relate it to how not only will it build your bones, but it's actually going to regulate your nervous system as well. And this is jumping, believe it or not. So bones respond to impact. We talk about using, you know, high impact things or lifting weights to build our bones, but high impact sends signals to the bones, the osteocytes to actually build. They, they, when they feel the force that will um, calcium, it's triggered to put more calcium in within one minute of this mechanical stimulation. So it's like, if you get this impact, there's a sign in the body saying, whoa, wait a second, we need stronger bones here. Send all the forces there to build the bone. So it promotes osteoplast formation. So those bone builders, and it decreases the bone breakdown signals. And there was research that did, said that just 10 to 20 jumps twice a day, for 16 weeks, I could sit here and I could have done like 100 jumps by now, but just 10 to 20 jumps for 16 weeks significantly improved bone hip bone density in um, premenopausal women. And there was a um, postmenopausal women um, doing a single lead, leg hopping um, that increased there by just jumping, I think it was 10 jumps a day and for three times a day. There's another study that did 10 vertical jumps three times a week for six months, and that increased the femoral, the neck bone. So that's your big bone in your leg, the um, density of that. And um, there's tons of studies now that are just showing just this little bit of jumping increases. So the neat thing too, so that's just like, hi, I'm just jumping for 10 jumps and that's what I've done. And there we go, we've built that. Interesting thing about the nervous system is when we do jumping, when we do things like heel drops, this, when we do things called bone tapping, so this can be tapping on our bones, it will actually regulate and calm our nervous system down. So when we're in a fight or flight state, our body is prepping to fight or to flee. That means we're gonna be activating the bones when we do that. A lot of our stress when we're in a fight, could be sitting in the car, when we're sitting at our desk, we're not actually fully engaging in that fight or flight. So our body has this high cortisol regulate or um, circulating in our system. When we activate the bones, we're telling our body that it's completed that cycle and we can relax. So when we ground in by doing these jumps, stomping is a great one, doing a little bone tapping, 
or I like to call this the angry chicken dance. And I will do this <laughs> if I'm angry and I've taught my clients and we both laugh and get rid of some of the stress at the same time. Not only are we gonna get rid of our stress, decrease our cortisol, we're also going to be um, stimulating bone density. So banging your ribs with your side and give them a little stomp. You remember that if you've been at a wedding, like na 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 and, and you're gonna ma 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 the chicken dance. You're gonna do an angry one or you're gonna get like stomp it out. So you're gonna be doing that and stomping or you can do the heel drops and stomp on your side. This is going to be building density, bone density in your ribs if you do the arms and the arms, but also in your legs. So you can do that if you're in a fight or flight state. You can do that if you want to just have some fun throughout your day and just get some rhythmic impact and receiving your body. Like you can tell your body, hey, we're safe. We're safe. The cortisol can come down and hey, wait a second, there's impact to the bones. Let's make them a little stronger. So there you go. The interesting thing is when we do this, when we signal safety to the body, we can activate that yin side. The body's going to build the bones. It's not going to break it down. We're going to activate that kidney energy, which means that we're not going to be depleting and going into that overdraft. We're going to help to get into a more relaxed state so we can feel calmer and build that oxytocin. And then we're back into that right yin and yang balance. So there you go. Simple practice, 10 to 20 jumps twice a day, heel drop, stomping, anything too intense. Do three sets of those. One, they can be in a row or throughout the day. Quality over quantity, consistency, make it happen. And then you can do other things and fuse them in there. But together, this is going to actually help you build your bones, decrease some of what I see as to be some of the primary issues affecting midlife women. And, um, you're going to have a little fun, hopefully, when you do it. So there you go. Hopefully that helps. Healthier bones on the way. Thanks for being here. I'll see you next time.